That's a very good question. Actually, what happens is uh, there are two things. Uh, uh, one is theory, you know, uh, and compliance where customers uh, uh, or CISOs or CIOs, they understand the theory, they know what the compliances are, and then there is uh, the solution. And that bit is also uh, uh, you know, uh, the most difficult bit because knowing the compliances is okay, but you know, getting uh, implementing the solution as per the compliance is a huge challenge. Okay, so what I would uh, so so let me just you know again break this into three uh, parts. One is your zero trust uh, access. Okay, so as per the zero trust framework, you know, uh, gone are those days when where you the password used to be the only form of uh, protection. Then you know, eventually. Uh, Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the GB show live. So you must have seen uh, many of these episodes on YouTube. Uh, and uh, last, uh, when we did aspiring CXOs in Delhi, I thought, why don't we should do a GB episode live? So that went quite amazing. And I just wanted to replica the same in Mumbai. So here we are with an amazing episode today. Uh, the episode, the topic which I chose, which is uh, every one of us wants to do, that is zero trust. What is zero trust? How we should be implementing that in our organization? To understand that, I have with me Brijesh Pillai, Sales Director, South Asia and Trust. He is having around two decades of experience and we are going to talk to him about the zero trust architecture and how it works. So Amazing. Uh, thanks, Brijesh, for joining in the GB Show Live. And uh, that's going to be my 71st episode. And you have seen uh, uh, 70 episodes glimpse already, which we have played today. And it's, I think, uh, one of the uh, cyber security show in India, which has been consistently running. And uh, it's more than one year and every week we are doing. How do you feel this show? Mein aake? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you know, I'm actually I'm privileged, you know, to be, uh, you know, to, to come here. So with my extensive experience in cybersecurity, this platform is very unique hai, mere liye, especially. Um, and uh, I hope, uh, you know, I, I'll be able to share my views with, you know, the audience. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. So as I said, uh, zero trust, right? So what is, uh, as per you, the zero trust principle is or what is zero trust framework? Yeah, so first of all, you know, uh, thank you, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Gaurav. What happened is like, uh, I, I know, uh, I, I think so the audience saw my presentation, uh, like I just had 15 minutes to explain what Zero Trust is hmm. and how, you know, uh, customers and, you know, CISO, CIOs can leverage Zero Trust because uh, Zero Trust is not a, uh, you know, uh, not a buzzword or not something that uh, uh, is good to know or, you know, cybersecurity, CISOs uh, are thinking about. They, uh, you know, I was just reading a data wherein, you know, 79% of the CISOs want to deploy uh, zero trust and be at a zero trust optimal maturity and out of which uh, only 25% are able to, you know, reach the advanced stage of zero trust mm -hmm. globally. So, uh, okay, so coming back to what you mentioned, zero trust is what happened, you know, uh, earlier due to the, uh, there was a way, the, you know, the, the IT network or, you know, the, uh, or data security was pretty simple up till 2009 and, you know, up till, uh, up till 2015. But due to the boom in, uh, you know, cloud and workforce, uh, work from home and, you know, the, uh, the, the customers, the workforce, the uh, users, they wanted access of data from everywhere, okay. This, this led to an explosion of endpoints. Endpoints everywhere from the customer wanted to uh, access data from everywhere. And they also wanted to, uh, and the, the issue with the organization was to give them the access, however, restrict them from giving access, uh, uh, giving access to, uh, to restrict these, them to giving access to their data itself and not go get into the, you know, data of other customers or which or PII, okay. So that's how NIST came up with the framework of zero trust and then uh, in, uh, uh, I think so. It took around seven to eight years for NIST to come up with the uh, the entire journey of zero trust, from which you know the customers can start from the the initial zero trust framework to the optimal. Okay. Okay. Amazing. And I think uh, when we are looking for the cloud born uh, organization and when they are starting up, you know, something from the scratch, it becomes uh, quite relevant that because 
they are implementing and they know the zero trust it becomes easy to implement it right but when i go to the complex or legacy organizations right and the traditional where traditional security is there what are the strategies which they can follow to have zero trust in place so basically you know what i uh, so you know we i had showcased this in my uh, slides okay so the initial stage is to first uh, identify the strategy you know which they want to adopt okay so what as interest as a cyber security organization you know we have around 15 plus years of digital security experience and you know we being the uh, we being amongst the uh, 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 you know leaders in consulting with we have our uh, team you uh, know who are uh, consulting with the NIST which is the US federation uh, uh, compliance okay uh, what we recommend is focus on three aspects which is uh, data at rest data in motion and data access if customer is able to cover all these three aspects uh, you know his data is uh, you know uh, he can achieve a date uh, zero trust at a mature uh, I, i would say at an advanced level yeah. okay. so they, so the customers can start off with this uh, you know data rest data address data in motion and data in access okay, okay. and uh, when we actually uh, talk about uh, implementing zero trust that comes with the solutions and uh, some of the best practices which we uh, put it in on around how someone should do the due diligence and uh, uh, make sure the compliance and availability yep. as a concept for zero trust is always available and working absolutely so you know uh, uh, so i've been as i said right uh, with my extensive experience which i've i've seen you know is cyber security is or uh, is always implemented where if there is a compliance okay so so uh, currently you know uh, we are a bit, a bit late but you know after our data protection bill which has come up it is exactly as per the gdpr which is european standard of compliances and uh, uh, gdpr is absolutely aligned to zero trust okay so what i will recommend is you know customers first uh, have a thorough uh, you know uh, research about uh, the data protection bill then you know have a and have a audit or have a consultant just to understand how you know the, uh, solutions can be implemented as per data protection bill which will be in line with the zero trust okay, okay. and what are the technologies you like to enforce which play key roles in zero trust like iam and any other technologies yeah. which you think are mandate and should be implemented in the right fashion for zero trust yeah there's a very good question actually what happens is uh, there are two things uh, uh one is theory you know uh, and compliance where customers uh, uh, or cso or cios they understand the theory they know what the compliances are and then there is uh, the solution and that bit is also uh, uh, you know uh, the most difficult bit because knowing the compliances is okay but you know getting uh, implementing the solution as per the compliance is a huge challenge okay so what i would uh, so so let me just you know again break this into three uh, parts one is your zero trust uh, access okay so as per the zero trust framework you know uh, gone are those days when where you the password used to be the only form of uh, protection then you know eventually uh, you know customers they moved on to the uh, second uh, uh, multi factor authentication but now you know multi factor authentication is also evolved okay so now we are at a stage where we want a phishing resistant multi factor authentication wherein you know the uh, you know it is the ultimate form of authentication so so you know you start with this uh, phishing resistant multi factor authentication coming to data in transit uh, i would always recommend which i i see i see you know now most of the organization who have you know intellectual assets especially iot devices okay oti iot devices they are looking at a pki solution public key infrastructure solution for protecting these iot devices the whole concept is uh, you should uh, give a digital birth certificate to these iot devices so that you understand these devices are are from your own ecosystem okay and the most important one which you know uh, is i can't harp upon is the data at rest okay mm -hmm. so there are already you know there are already compliances like aadhar data uidi mentions uh, explicitly that if customer is uh, an owner of aadhar data it needs to be protected in a vault format or else you know, there are heavy penalties and many organizations have been penalized for this okay so data address becomes very important so what we recommend is first identify your jewels which is your pii then encrypt it okay with the, and and then have different compliances like key management solution and hsms you know to protect the keys so that your complete ecosystem is a certified encrypted uh, is in a certified encrypted uh, format okay okay fair enough and uh, 
if i talk about any case study you will like to share with us or maybe how entrust does us better and if uh, any of these guys wants to contact entrust how they can do so maybe a bit about you your organization and how yes. you do it how you are different sure sure De definitely so see you know uh, uh, as i said right so entrust is uh, we been in this uh, digital security um, uh, since 15 years and before that we were into physical side of security which is your access card your issuance your uh, you know debit card credit card issuance uh, financial issuance citizen id so we've been in this industry since 40 years now okay so what uh, what we recommend is you know um, is always uh, first give a, you know definitely customers can approach us okay what we can do is we we do have a, a center of uh, excellency team okay wherein we will help the customers to identify the cryptographic assets which has become a big issue now with the customers because uh, there are so so much of encryption so much of uh, digital certificates so much so much of uh, you know uh, 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 devices all around that we will identify uh, you know these cryptographic assets give you a health check to to uh, and, and 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 give you a, a their position in which form of zero trust are they currently and then also help them with the roadmap to you know go to the optimal uh, path and we are, you can you know you can approach me anytime we uh, we have a team of specialists here in india itself okay so we are happy to help you you know anytime sir fair enough thanks thanks bilish and uh, thanks for being on the gb show live it was really great talking to you and the great insights coming out of you and as this uh, uh, i have a ritual which i do on gb show that is uh, giving a big goodie back to oh, that's guests. <laughs> yeah so here it is for you thank you thank you thank you and i wish you all the luck thank you Gaurav. thank you thank you everyone and uh, if you like to be on the gb show do get in touch take care thank you sir bye bye, bye.